This is Victory House. Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> Let us read from verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. There's public holiday on Monday. And uh, I know that the guys are playing soccer somewhere. So if you are so led, please join us. Amen. You will see some people that will do some hard tricks. Amen. <laughs> do you be surprised? Some people think it's only the word. Yes, there's the word, but the word becomes flesh. And what are we going to do with the flesh? We use it sometimes to play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. The Bible says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. You know, there are so many people that like to just argue the Bible, they like to pitch themselves on the very edge of everything. They will throw questions like this and say, Did Jesus not turn water into wine? You know? And they, 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 they are going somewhere. They will say, when did the Bible say that you should not drink wine? When did the Bible say, I, you know, they are going somewhere. But when you understand scriptures and you understand some things that the Bible suggests and uh, uh, recommends for us, it is not even a matter of right or wrong. It is a matter of what those things can deprive you from. Look at this scripture. Uh, go back to verse 18. The Bible said, don't be drunk with wine. He said, because wine leads to debauchery. He said, but be filled with the spirit. Now, you need to understand that man is a spirit. He lives in the body. And he has a soul. It's not the other way around. Man is essentially spirit. You are a spirit. I am a spirit. And that's why when we leave this earth, we are still alive. And most of the time, this body here, some people will still see the body and then they'll be doing all kinds of things and bamming the body and do all that, you know. But you are not there. Because if you were there, you will not be in that, the person will not be in that casket, right? So that means that the real you is not the you that we can touch. It's not the you that we can feel. Because the Bible said when God created Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1, uh, they were still there until God put breath into them. So that means that when Adam was on the floor, when Adam was just uh, molded, and before God breathed into Adam, that body was not all of Adam. It was when God breathed into Adam that the fullness of Adam entered. In fact, you can say that the real Adam entered after the breath of God. The other Adam was just a case. And so, nobody treats a case as if the case is the content. I, I understand that cases and content and containers are very important. I am not saying that because so we are spirit, then I live anyhow. I eat anything. I use my body anyhow. That's why some of us go to the gym. We, we, we know we are spirit, but the Bible said bodily exercise uh, profited uh, little. And little is okay, all right? How many people are fine with little? At least some little. If the body exercise can profit little, is that not okay? Because then you can power the body and you can power the spirit. Because there are some people, their body expires before their spirit. And in this earth, if your body expires, you have to live. <laughs> Amen? Because this earth is by human bodies. People that have expired their bodies, that have used their body anyhow, their spirit will have to leave them. Because if the body packs up, the spirit can't stay in the dead body. <laughs> the spirit has to go back to the person that put it originally there. But the Bible says here, it says, don't be drunk with wine. Because you see, this body, uh, spirit, soul, and body, there is a dynamics there. Your body can be an hindrance to your spirit. When God says something, God is speaking to your spirit. God is talking to the real you. But sometimes that real you can manifest because your body has disturbed you too much. That's why we fast. Some people will say something like fasting is Old Testament. You see, fasting doesn't do anything to God. I'm sure you know that. What fasting just do is align us. Fasting takes us away from the road. Because you see, if you look at it in the final analysis, why is it that what God has said has not happened. Some of it is his timing. Some of it is just sheer environmental influences. 
And some of those environmental influences includes you. Includes you. So God can say, Emmanuel, this is what is going to happen to you. And if me as a human being, as an environmental influence in this case, I don't cooperate and align with God, I will delay the process. And sometimes it may look like the process is even denied. It may look like the process doesn't happen. Not because of the God factor, but because of the me factor. So that's why the Bible says, look, you need to be able to make sure that your body does not get in the way. And that's why we come to events like this, where we express ourselves in the Lord. We let our spirit gain ascendancy. We let our spirit find expression. We, we, we allow our spirit to connect to the spirit of God afresh so that it dominates our, our flesh. And the spirit of God finding expression through our spirit will be able to influence our lives. And that's why the Bible is saying here, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. Can I say something about being drunk? I personally believe lasting change are caused by drunk men. Lasting change are not caused by normal men. Normal people do normal. Normal people do normal. Abnormal people, the good abnormal people, do good abnormal things. They disrupt things. They change the status quo. They change the equation. They change the normal things. They change the things that people have said cannot change. Drunk people. Even in the naturals, try to study people that are like inventors, people that change. They seem to be sometimes mad. Sometimes when they say what they say, it looks like, is this guy okay? Because sometimes you, can, you cannot be completely in the realm of normal to be able to force a change. Because many of the changes we are talking about has to break with normalcy. How is it normal for somebody to think that a metal, big metal, like the aircraft, like aeroplanes, will be in the air? 13 hours, 18 hours, non-stop, just constantly in the air, in all kinds of weather, and it does not fall by itself. You, it, they bring it at the time. They, how, how is that normal? Oh, now it looks normal to you because you've read it in physics. They tell you all this love, this love, that. But that, it was not normal in their days. People thought they were crazy. People thought that was... You need some level of crazy. And, I, and I, I, I'm speaking the Holy Ghost kind of crazy will happen to you in these last few days. And it will take you into June in the name of Jesus. I rebuke whatever is making you normal. That is hindering you from enjoying the fullness of God in the name of Jesus. Oh, it, it will take normal to look at a society like this and say, I will raise children that will fear the Lord. I will raise children that will not conform to this generation. Because if you look at the normal, if you look at natural, natural doesn't look very promising. Every day they are killing people. And you are looking at the same thing and say, I will send my children to this school. They will go in the morning and they will come back in the afternoon. They won't call me and say, come in, in a hurry. Are you hearing the word of God I'm speaking to you? If you have a child, if you want to have a child, I'm saying that they won't call you in a hurry to come and grab your kids. If they are shooting in the front, they will be at the back. If they are shooting at the back, they will be in front. No child connected to you will be a victim of gun violence. In the name of Jesus. Now, I sympathize with people that have experienced it. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying that, look, I can be abnormal. I can break myself out of the park. I can, I can exempt myself. There's always exemption. Don't you know that? <laughs> Even in, 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 in sciences, they will tell you that all things being equal. In mathematics, you hear that, that all things being equal. So that means there are times that all things are not equal. And I'm telling you that all things will not be equal in my favor. In the name of Jesus. When my safety is concerned, things will not be equal. In my favor. In the name of Jesus. You need some level of drunk. Being drunk. But it depends on what you are drunk with. You need to be drunk with the spirit. Amen. You know, several years ago, some of you might have known, in 1998, the Redeemed Christian Church of God through Pastor Yeh Adeboye had an event. No, never ever. That event has never been done before. People did not even know that the land that they did the event existed. I never knew. I used to do school around that time. I was learning German and I was... I never knew there was a land like that. That could take about six million people. 
one land belonging to somebody. <laughs> is that? Where is that land? But somebody became drunk with something. He is like God suspended, you know, because sometimes this, when you associate with God, you get drunk in this spirit and God moves you into this mood. It is when you are finished doing it that you like, what just happened? I was walking on water. I didn't know it. I speak concerning somebody listening to me. You are going to do things in this land that the, you will read of yourself and you say, is this true? In the name of Jesus, you are going to break records. The records that have been set long in your industry, you will break records. Ah, I, I, I speak to somebody, you will invent things here. Because some of us, we are already thinking local. We are already thinking, maybe if I do something and sell it to people that look like me, that talk like me. No. You can show up at places and talk like this. Your accent sounding funny. But even with your funny accent, everybody will still listen to you because they can hear you. Because you know when you have results, they hear results. Results can speak even more than the accent. They, they will hear the accent. I teach. I teach. And I don't inflect my voice. I don't do nothing. I speak like this. If you don't like, don't hear. <laughs> don't hear. Some people say you said this. Ah, you so you, you mean you heard? So you can hear. You can hear. Some people say, pardon, uh, excuse me, excuse me. They, they, they have not seen results. When results show up, they will, they will even be quoting what you have said. I declare concerning somebody, you are going to change the status quo in the name of Jesus. So the Bible said, don't be drunk with wine. Where it is in excess, or it leads to debauchery, but instead be filled with the spirit. Let us live a field life because a field life is the life of result. A field life is a full life. Is a full life. This life results are powered. There are things that power results. Some people have other things powering their result, but you and I don't have any other thing that can power our result. Let the spirit power your result. Let the Spirit power your result in the name of Jesus. Now, the Bible says in verse 19, because it now wants to explain to us how being filled with the Spirit can look like, what it will lead to, or how you can reverse it. How can you be filled with the Spirit? Because he says, don't be drunk with wine when it is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, he now says some things after that. So, if we listen to what he's going to say next, we should know how we get filled in the Spirit. How we fill up our tank in the Spirit. How we make sure that we are charged. We stay charged. We stay energized. We stay powered. We are not running on empty. We are not running on low. We show up at places and we are loaded. Not just loaded with information, but we are loaded from the inside. The Spirit is leaking, so to say, in the name of Jesus. Look at what scripture says. It says, speaking to one another with psalms, with hymns, with songs from the Spirit. Just like we were doing tonight. It is good. It is good to sing your own song. It is good to compose your own song after another song that you have been hearing. It is good to put your own verses. It is good to put your own version. It is good to sing your own time. Because you know what it does? It fills you up. It charges you over. It puts it something on you. It puts it an energy on you. It puts it a force on you. I've said this before, an analogy that I heard from a, a, a great mentor. That the difference between 10 and 1 million is what? Huh? The zeros. The decimal point. Where the period is. 10 can become 1 million if you just move the point of 10. You move it several spaces or several steps to the right. Ste 10 becomes, you see, that dot in life is you. The more you are filled, the more empowered you are as a dot, the more you move to the right. The more you move. The more you leak as a dot, the more you move to the left. So you will find so many people, the same them, the same them. Nobody knew. Just the same you. When there is a proper feeling, it moves to the right. The tens become millions. I thought somebody was saying amen to that. The tens become millions. In the name of Jesus. Some of you have written checks and the maximum check is a thousand type. But I'm telling you, you are going to write tens of thousands. You write millions of checks. In the name of Jesus. Somebody, some people, are you scared to say amen to that? Can you say a big amen to that? 
I am not saying million in the currency of wherever you are connected to. I'm saying millions in dollars. Can somebody say amen to that? The people that are writing millions, do they have their heads? Their zeros have just moved. Their period have just moved. They have just moved several places to the right. And I'm speaking to some people listening to me this evening. Things are changing for you. You are moving in the name of Jesus. Because you see, there is something you and I need to understand about the Spirit of God. In Genesis chapter 1, let's, let's look at it. And let me bring this to a close because I'm getting excited now. You know, it's good to be excited, but I thought I won't preach, but I'm almost getting into preaching mode. Okay. Genesis chapter 1. Let's read, read from verse 1. Are you giving me? <coughs> All right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was formless, or the zeros of the earth was on the left. Huh? The earth was zero, but God needed to move the zero so that the zero would not be zero again. It will become several things. Because at this time, there was zero human being. But right now, as God not moves the zeros, just by that action that he did in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible makes us to understand that God did not just, I mean, not even the Bible now, our, our present statistics make us to understand that God moved that thing much more than zero. We are now seven point something billion people by the reason of the action. But look at the action that will happen shortly. Since now the earth was formless, now the earth was zero. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was over in. Another translation says, and the spirit of God was moving. Ladies and gentlemen, when the spirit of God comes upon a man, it moves a man. When the spirit of God comes upon you, it animates you. When the spirit of God comes upon you, it puts motion to you. Where you have been mute, it makes you to speak. Where you have been motionless, it makes you to move. And I speak concerning somebody. You have been at a particular spot, but I declare in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, let the spirit move let there be motion in the name of Jesus so when we see the spirit we see movement so when God is saying be filled with the spirit he's saying you know what I want to I want to put motion to you I want to put life I want to animate you I like saying this example I don't know if I've said it here before about super Ted how many people have seen super Ted if you've not seen super Ted you should come and enroll in child care you need to grow <laughs> Just kidding. You know, some of those things. I think I, I, I think one day I was just curious. I went to search for it and I saw it. So I think it's on YouTube. You can find it. Super Ted and Spotty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Super Ted was a teddy bear. Uh, the kids are some of them are already sleeping and distracted, so they won't get this. But maybe they will watch it some other time. Super Ted was a teddy bear, lifeless. But something happened. Somebody came out of space. And just did something on Super Ted, and Super Ted came alive. Super Ted did like this. He opened up his chest, and he became a superhero. I declare that in the name of Jesus, somebody is coming alive in this season. The real superhero, you will come alive in the name of Jesus. So, you see, when the Bible talks about the spirit, it's an animating spirit. It's an animating spirit. And that's why he said, be filled with the spirit. Speaking. Let there be actions. The, the, the action, let it not start from activity that you are trying to make things happen. You first speak in the realm of the spirit. You first speak to the atmosphere. Because you see, in the economy of the spirit, speaking is not just for communication. Speaking is for creation. In the economy of the spirit, speaking, listen to that. Speaking is not just for communication. Speaking is for creation. That is why many children have a difficult life. Because when they were growing up, there was negative speaking. They were speaking that parents spoke by circumstances. Spirits spoke by what they saw. Spirits spoke by diagnosis. What they diagnosed at school. You know, sometimes the teacher will tell you, this child does not know math. That's a diagnosis. That's a that's, his, that's an analysis. 
it's, it's something that they have discovered. But if you take that as a prophecy, you have killed that child. And there are many children like that that started their life. And somehow, somebody used the economy or the spirit negatively on them. But I stand in the name of Jesus. As a man of God, ordained by God, I declare that in the name of Jesus, every negative word in the realm of the spirit that has been spoken over you, over your children, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Oh, because we can negate words. We can negate words in the spirit. We don't know how the form and void happened in Genesis chapter 1. But we know that the, the spirit of the Lord came and God spoke to negate that one. He negated the darkness. He negated the void. I declare where there is void in your life, where there is darkness in your life, I declare this morning, uh, this <laughs> evening, that let there be light in the name of Jesus. So the spirit of God started moving. Or the spirit of God is a moving spirit. And then you see what happened immediately the spirit moved. God began to speak. So what I'm trying to say here, where, where, where I went to Genesis, is to show you that God is a moving spirit. And this moving spirit works with speaking. Because in verse 19 of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says, speak. Speak. You can go back there, please. Ephesians chapter 9, 5, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19. Speaking. Now, speaking is the verb there. Every other thing after speaking is like nouns. So you speak what? Psalms. You speak what? Hymns. You speak what? Spiritual song. But the real operative word there or thing to do, action to do, is speaking, sir. So when you come to enforce, don't keep quiet, sir. When you come to church, don't keep quiet. In your own life, walk around things and speak. Walk around things and speak like this. Sing songs. Sing songs over things. Sing songs over situations. Sing songs over children. Uh, you can walk to a child's room and sing a song. Uh, and sing the song. Uh, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And the song does not have to be melodious. Because people think every song is melody. And I thank God how you put it. He first started speaking to one another with psalms. How many of you know the Lord is my shepherd? I shall not want. You might not have sung the music of the Lord is my shepherd before. But I'm sure you have read it. That is a psalm. That is a psalm. A psalm is a song to God. That's all. And it doesn't matter who writes the song. It can be you. You can write it. You can write the song. You in your house, you can have a psalm that you say. You can have a chant that you say every day in your house. In our house, we have a chant. We, we have three scriptures we always say. My children later on will grow up to know that those were scriptures. They will just think that we were just saying every day in the morning. Weekdays, we say that. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. I and the children that the Lord has given me. I remember some years ago, I think we just had Nathan. I started thinking to myself, I'm making this boy to say I and the children that the Lord has given me. He's not, he doesn't have to, he's my child. I should be the one saying it. No, I said he should be saying it because that's what will happen to his own children too. We are not going to stop this God thing on myself or on him. We are going to continue to forever in the name of Jesus. Is anybody with me like that? My family will serve God to the many, 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 many generations. If you believe, you say, believe in Amen. So we say, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. I and the children that the Lord has given me were for signs and wonders. What's the last one? The glory shall increase me more and more. I and my children in Jesus' name. Every time we say it, it's not a song. It's a psalm. Or they are a combination of psalms. We are speaking. Why are we doing that? Because when we are doing that, we are being filled with the Spirit. The Spirit, we are engaging the Spirit. And remember, the Spirit is a moving Spirit. That Spirit will move you from zero to something. That Spirit will move you from nothing to something. It will move you from nobody to somebody. It will move you from the back to the front. I thought I am talking about somebody. The Spirit will move you from back to the front. Some of you, you need that. Your file is at the back. It's under the something. They need to bring it. <laughs> but God can do that. You know, they can just bring it from... Have you not heard that story before that the general overseer talked about? That they were seven foot somewhere. It was in a line. And I think it, the, the way he saw the line, 
he knew it wouldn't get to his turn. Suddenly, somebody just broke the line from the middle and brought him from the middle to the front. I declare that that will happen to somebody. They will break the line from wherever you are and make you the new beginning and make you the new first. If you believe this thing, will you say a big amen? So, the spirit moves. But it's this speaking that controls that movement or that spirit. And don't get it twisted. The spirit being filled with the spirit does not have to be spooky. You may not feel it at all. You may just be as, can, as natural as natural can be. But the spirit is moving. The spirit is moving. I mean, I don't know how God felt in Genesis chapter 1. I don't know how loaded he felt. I'm sure he felt like the same God before Genesis chapter 1. Because I know that before the beginning began, he was there. So he felt the same way. But he, he, he didn't allow how he felt to mean anything. He just engaged the spirit. And how do you engage the spirit? By speaking. Speak to one another. In church, speak to one another. At home, with your family. And with yourself sometimes, speak to one another. You know you can speak to one another as yourself. You don't know how you do that. Go before the mirror and speak to one another. Sing to yourself. You don't do that. You need to do that. I sing to myself. I look at the mirror. Even sometimes at the gym, you sing to yourself. You walk around, you, you pray, you, you speak to yourself. Because the Bible says, speak to yourself. Psalms and hymns. Sing hymns. Sing hymns. I told them to get a hymn. Did you get it? We'll sing that hymn. You know, sing hymns. Find hymns. Some of them are old hymns, rock of ages, something like that. You can sing that. There are new hymns that you don't know they are even hymns, but they are hymns. And then the Bible says spiritual song. What's a spiritual song? It's a song that doesn't have any author. <laughs> it may be somebody's song that you change to your own. You emphasize one word there. You emphasize two words there. You, you, you sing it in your understanding. You sing it in another language that is known to men. You sing it in another language that is unknown to men. But make sure that you are just connecting. Because you see, the more you are doing this, the Bible says, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. You don't even have to open your mouth to do this. You can be at work, ladies and gentlemen. You can be at your desk and be making music in your heart. You can be making music in your heart at work. And you need to be doing that. Sometimes during break, you need to take a, a music break from your t the desk and walk around and just stroll around. Make music in your heart. Sing unto the Lord in your heart. Some of you, that you don't need your ears to do your work. That you can put something in your ears. Oh, please, wait, spend some little change on a good AirPod or uh, um, um, headphones uh, and stuck into it to your ear and play music. Oh yeah, I, I, I played. If some music can talk, <laughs> they would have said, "Excuse me, sir, is enough." <laughs> we have played them. We have overplayed them. You know that song I sing here. The boy you saved, I probably play it every day, almost every morning. Before I start anything, I play it. Sometimes at the gym, I play it. You know, just. Because what, you are, what are you trying to do? You are keeping the music to be playing. You want the music in your heart to be playing because you want to have this connection with the spirit because you understand that the spirit is a moving spirit.